This is the Ghibli Aero Sensor and this changes everything. The ability to see your CDA in real time or the ability to do comparison tests between different positions and different equipment makes this the ultimate tool to take your performance to the next level. Let's check it out. So what is the Ghibli? Basically, it's a collection of super sensitive sensors contained in this package that you attach under the head unit at the front of your bike via a GoPro style mount. And it weighs less than 100 grams. Obviously, nobody wants to put something on their bike that's made to make them faster if the thing itself weighs a ton. The unit can measure lots of environmental metrics such as wind speed, wind direction, temperature, air density, etc, etc. The device also has its own super sensitive GPS chip to accurately measure your speed and you pair it with your bike's power meter so the device can see how much power you're putting down. The device then does some clever maths to figure out your CDA. Now, what is CDA? CDA stands for the coefficient of aerodynamic drag. And it's basically how big of a hole you're punching in the air, but also how slippery you are through that hole. So, as well as reducing your frontal area, you also need to consider how you disturb the airflow. So think about a round tube versus like an aero tube. From the front, they both have the same area, but the aero tube will cause less drag, thus a lower CDA. Now, CDA is measured in meters squared, but the app can also give you results in watts or time saved over a certain distance to make the results more uh, intuitive. Also, full disclosure, Ghibli aren't paying me to make this video. They did give me this unit for free, but no money changed hands. Also, they have no say of what I say in the video. They have not seen the script or anything, so I'm gonna be reviewing this warts and all. Uh, there will be a link in the description. It is an affiliate link, so if you do buy one, I do get some kickback, but I think at the time of making this video, it's even out of stock, so even my motivation there isn't much. So rest assured, I'll be telling you what I really think about this, and uh, yeah, not holding any punches. So what can it do? Uh, the two main functions of the unit are basically, number one, to show you your real-time CDA, and number two, to do some comparison tests. Now, seeing your CDA in real time is good for training yourself to stay in an aero position, uh, but it's probably gonna be a feature that's more likely to be used by like triathletes while they're racing or whatever. Uh, I find myself using the real time CDA a few times to do some kind of like on the fly experiments or just messing around with my position really quickly. But for me, the real meat of the product is the comparisons. So, in a nutshell, the app talks you through testing protocols, such as performing out and backs over a 3K course, uh, and you follow the instructions on the app during the testing. Now, the important thing is that when you're testing, you only change one thing at a time. So for example, if you're changing wheels, you've got to make sure you stay in the same position for every run. Uh, you've got to make sure the tires are the same, the tire pressure are the same, etc., etc. Now, once you've done your tests, uh, you can review the results in either the app or on the website. Uh, the app will give you your CDA for each run and then you can see what's quicker. Or you can choose to display like the what's needed for a certain speed or time saved over a certain length course, etc, etc. Recently, I've been doing lots of wheel testing with it, which you guys may have seen in other videos on the channel. And I was just shocked at how accurate the results were. Uh, when using the same wheels in the same position, the standard deviation of the results is super low, which means you're basically able to detect very small differences between equipment or position. Uh, the last wheel test I did, for example, comparing the Roval Rapid CLX2s to the CRW CS5060s, uh, the results were separated by just 0.0015 meters squared, or just one watt difference at 40 k's an hour. Now, given that your power meter is probably only accurate down to a handful of watts anyway, this is really the best resolution you can hope for. Speaking of power meters, I think there's a good analogy here between like early day of power meter tech and this tech now. In the beginning of power meters, you had the early power meters like the power tap hub or like the early SRM power meters and the tech was pretty expensive and not very user friendly. You know, people weren't sure how to get the most out of the tech and they didn't know what to do with the data, etc., etc. Like with something like a wheel set, you spend the money, you put it on your bike and your bike instantly gets faster. Uh, but something like this or the power meter, you know, you spend the money, but then you need to do some analysis. You need to improve yourself. You need to look at the data and make yourself a better cyclist using this tool. But the overall potential is a lot greater than just the wheel set. You know, a new wheel set may save you like 
five, 10 watts, but by using a power meter to improve your cycling or using the Ghibli to improve your aero, you may be saving dozens of watts. So pros and cons. Uh, this review, by the way, is just a user review. You know, I've been testing the unit now for a few months, doing lots of tests, which you guys will be seeing on the channel in the coming weeks and months. Uh, but this review isn't a super technical review, simply because I'm not qualified to do a technical review on something I don't know enough about. You know, I'm not an aerodynamicist. I don't know anything about these sensors. This is not my area of expertise. However, I can share my thoughts after using this for these few months as an end user. As usual, I like to simplify this process by just putting into pros and cons. So we'll start with the pros. Now, I think the ability to see concrete evidence of what's quicker is super valuable. You know, lots of people use like the bro science method of a you know, ride at a certain wattage for a set course and then compare the times or the average speeds between the two. Now the problem with this bro science is that the air density, the wind direction and the wind speed are just constantly changing in the real world. Even when you think there's no wind, it's always, always changing. Now, if you do 100 runs on wheel A and 100 runs on wheel B, the law of large numbers says that you'll be able to see some trends, but trying to do 100 runs on each wheel set, no one has the time for that. So, something like the Ghibli, which lets you do a few runs on each wheel set and then gives you some reliable data, saves so much time, speeds up the process, and for me, that is priceless. For me as a reviewer trying to do reviews for you guys that have value, but also as a guy who has an online shop selling products and trying to find the best products, this really helps me to find out what is actually fastest. You know, If you listen to the brands, everyone has the fastest bike, everyone has the fastest wheels, et cetera, et cetera. This is a way to see black and white evidence of what is actually faster. Let's talk about the cons. Uh, I think Ghibli have done a good job of taking something that's pretty complicated and making it accessible for everyone. Now again, this is still the early days of the tech and like in the early days of power meters, there's a learning curve for both the brands and the users. Ghibli have got some areas where they need to make a decision of perhaps making it more accessible or user friendly, but then that's at the cost of like hiding away some of the technical details and stuff. So with all that said, uh, the technology is still in its infancy. So there are sometimes some frustrations, you know, sometimes maybe you'll try to do a calibration run and the calibrations failed, or maybe sometimes you don't attach it tight enough and it slowly droops down over time. And then your afternoon of testing data is basically useless. Now, some of these are user error, but sometimes it is Ghibli dropping the ball with some bugs in the app or whatever. But since I've had the unit, I think there's already been like three or four updates to the app to remove bugs. So they're improving it all the time and it's getting better and better. But just bear in mind that at this stage, this tech is not idiot proof yet. You know, you do need to use half a brain and you do need to have some free time to really spend analyzing it and sometimes finding out what's going wrong. But if you're all willing to put the time in, this is invaluable. One other nitpick of the device is that the GoPro mount isn't above the center of mass for the unit. So if you don't tighten it enough, it will droop down over time. Again, it's not a game ending thing because you know you can change different mount or bolt it down quicker so it doesn't droop down over time. But nitpicking is my job, I'm a reviewer, so that's what I'm gonna do. So should you get one? And uh, now for me as a reviewer, this is an uh, essential part of my kit. Uh, I think the price, while expensive, is fair. So the unit has an early bird price of 1,200 US dollars, which if we put it in bike terms is about the same price as a wheel set, I guess. Uh, I think this has the potential to make you a lot faster than just buying a new wheel set would over time. So by that value proposition, I think it is good value. Of course, over time, the price will come down and the unit will get easier to use, but by that point, all of your competition will also have one and then you won't have the competitive edge. So if you do want to get that edge over your competitors or even just your riding buddies, I think it is better to get one earlier. Of course, if that sounds like too much trouble, you can just keep watching this channel and I'll tell you what I find out to be the fastest anyway. So you do you. Anyway, there is a link in the description below if you want to head over to the site and check it out for yourselves. Uh, I'm gonna keep using mine and you'll see plenty of videos going forwards where I've been using this to test wheels. 
Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those videos and hit the little bell notification too so that the YouTube algorithm isn't telling you what to watch and you can just choose what to watch yourself. Take some of your freedom back. But um, if you do like the YouTube algorithm, it thinks you'll like this video next.